everyone, it's Melanie of Art Studio 320, and this week's project looks weird, right? It looks like it's already finished. Well, it is. This was a project I did like a year ago, not long ago. This is a coffee table that Phil and I have had since we first got married. It was one of our big purchase items as far as furniture is concerned, and we were very proud of it. It's solid pine, which is a softer wood and it was subjected to three children with hot wheels and different kinds of trucks and things like that and we knew that that was part of the deal and we thought someday it's going to look very well loved and it did and at that point i did paint it it looked good for a while it was red it was pretty cool looking actually, but it started to date itself. And I thought, okay, I'm going to refinish it as part of my YouTube channel. And the paint that I used was a powdered milk paint, which I know is very popular and more power to the people that use it. I am not a big fan. I have decided I'm tired of this color it's never been one that i really liked very much so it's a pretty color but it doesn't really go with the decor in my family room i have a beautiful rug and it does pick up this color but it's not really quite what i wanted so i'm going to strip the top re-sand it i'm going to keep the legs as is because I love this Java color. I think they turned out beautifully. The drawer as well. The top, well, stick around to find out. Since I won't be doing anything to the legs, I want to protect them. And Scotch Blue is a great product for that. You can use it when you're spray painting or lots of other things like stripping. This is a list of items that I use when I am stripping furniture. I would say that obviously gloves, you have to have gloves. You don't want to burn your skin. Safety glasses if you don't wear glasses. Plastic wrap is something that I use because I don't want that citrus strip to dry out. It's very difficult to get off once it's dry. I waited about an hour before I tested the corner here. I put a little paper towel in the container I was going to be putting all the waste in so it was easier to pop out. I pulled back the plastic and you could see that the first, I'd say four layers, because there's two layers of primer on top of two layers of paint and then two layers of paint on top of the primer. So about four layers were coming off. But I discovered very quickly the other two layers were not coming off. So I took off all of the junk that was loose, put the plastic back on after I put more stripper down, and then I waited another hour but it was clear to me that the second time around, it wasn't coming off as well as the first. So I decided to get out my carbide scraper. Now, a lot of people swear by the carbide scraper. I'm still a little bit skeptical, but I have to say in this instance, it worked very well. It pulled the paint off. You pull the carbide scraper towards you and you apply pressure from that little knob on the top. You don't want to push too hard because that will scratch your wood. If you apply the right amount of pressure with that knob on top, you will find that it works pretty well, very well. <laughs> The 
most important part in the stripping process is the end when you are applying the mineral spirits. The mineral spirits neutralize the chemicals that were applied to strip off the paint and the stain. You can't forget. You want to make sure that you get every part of the area that you had the stripper on. So take your time, wipe it all down, and make sure that every part is covered. Once I finished, I had to go back with my carbide stripper and go over the areas that had some thicker paint on it. And then I had to go through the painstaking process of sanding. During the sanding process, you want to use a tack cloth like I have here or a microfiber cloth to wipe off all of the sawdust because if you don't, it can get caught up in your sandpaper and start scratching, which you don't want. I am using a brand new color by Fusion Mineral Paints called Everett. One thing I like the most about Fusion is that I can do this in two coats. I don't need to keep applying and keep applying. The other great thing is that there is top coat in the paint, so I don't have to add top coat either. I didn't mention this in the beginning of the video, but there was another reason why I wanted to repaint this. The paint was chipping off, and this is the milk paint that I was discussing earlier. It started to chip off after just a couple of months, and <laughs> I wasn't thrilled about that. But I will say it was very easy to take a chisel to and get off and I can see the color that I painted it before. It came off pretty easily. I sanded it down but I needed to put wood filler on it to level it off so that I could paint it and it would look smooth. So I added wood filler. I use plastic wood X for my wood filler. It dries pretty easily. It's easy to sand and it's easy to paint over. I added this natural stain, which doesn't add color, but it, I thought that it would show me any scratches that may have been left behind from sanding. Unfortunately, I didn't think about the fact that I would be adding a water-based paint wash, which you can't apply over an oil-based stain. So I had to sand it all off after it dried and then go back and apply my paint wash. That's what I call it. I really don't know what to call it. <laughs> All it is is paint with water. So you're watering down your paint and really that's up to you how much water you want to add. The more water, the more translucent the paint will become. I am using 
five. I believe I'm using five different colors of stain. I'm using Kona on the ends, then I'm using Nutmeg right next to the Kona, then I'm using the Paint Wash, then I used Antique Walnut, then the Java, and then I did the same on the other side. I am using Minwax Polyurethane Oil Based Top Coat. So all I had to do was wait for the stain to dry and then I could apply my top coat because it's oil based and the stain is oil based. If it were a water based top coat, I would need to wait at least a week. I like to wait a couple of weeks because if the oil based stain is not dry, you may get cloudiness on your top coat or in your top coat and you don't want that. The downside to using an oil-based top coat is that it takes three to four hours before it's dry enough to sand and put a second coat on and then a third coat and possibly a fourth coat. So you can see how that would take a very long time. Now I only use two coats unless it's something like a tabletop that gets used a lot and then I would put three to four coats. You know, it never ceases to amaze me that you can refinish a piece of furniture over and over again. You can take it off the side of the road or you can grab it out of your own house and you can make it into something completely new. That is a very cool job and I have that job and it's really exciting to share all of that with you. Now this particular piece I have done three times. The first time I was actually inspired by a YouTube video. The second time was last year when I put it on my own YouTube video and this time. Now if you'd asked me yesterday, are you in love with it? Do you like it? Whatever. I would have said, I don't know. I'm not really sure and I think what I'm was feeling was a creative insecurity. And that's pretty common with an artist. Sometimes we feel insecure about something we've done, especially if it's really out there. And I wouldn't say this is really out there, but it's definitely way different than what a lot of people do. I have done this before. I did it on two end tables. And you can check out that video. I will put it up at the end of this video along with the video that I did a year ago. The beauty of it is, is if you don't like what you've refinished, then you can do it again. So don't stop yourself from doing something that maybe is out there. First of all, if you like it, that's all that's important. Second of all, take the chance. How are you gonna know unless you try? It's that age old question. How are you gonna know unless you try? Good luck on your next project and thanks for being here. I'll see you next time. You can do it. Hey, thanks for watching my video. You can find more videos just like this on my YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe.